So when it comes to operators inside PHP, we use them in order to, you guessed it, perform operations inside PHP. And we have many different types of operators in PHP. We have about 12 different ones, but we're not gonna talk about all the different types in this episode here, because again, it might overwhelm you and you might not understand what purpose some of them have until we get a little bit later into the course here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and teach the ones that you do need to know about for now, as we continue these lessons going on from here on out. So as you can see behind me here, I do have different types of operators we will be talking about today. And don't get too worried about the fact that there's six of them up there. If you do need to in the future, return to this episode to look up some of the operators and wasn't willing to do so. I will also leave a link in the description where you can look up these operators if you want to. So you can always return back if you don't remember all of them. I just kind of want you to get an idea about what exactly these operators are and what we can use them for. So now before we start talking about the operators, let's actually go and declare a few variables that we're going to be used together with these operators. So as you can see, we have three different variables. We have two that has a number assigned to them, and then we have one we just declare because we don't have a value for this one yet. So the essential idea here is that we're going to be using the sum variable in order to calculate the other two together and assign it to the sum. It's pretty simple, it's just basic math here. So talking about the first operator, we have something called an arithmetic operator. And the basic idea here is something you've probably seen before when it comes to math and that sort of thing, which is that we basically take the sum and just set it equal to two numbers that we either add together, we subtract them, we divide them, we multiply them. We can do a bunch of different things here. So there is quite a few different <laughs> arithmetic operators. It is a tongue twister when you don't speak English. So Arithmetic operators is just basic math when it comes to, you know, doing mathematic operations. And then we have something called assignment operators. And these are just essentially a shortcut for us in order to perform certain operations faster. So we don't have to write an unnecessary amount of code. So in this example, here you can see we don't have the sum variable up here. I just took num1 and num2. And the basic idea here is that we want to take num1 and we want to assign it to num1 plus num2. And because if we were to take num1 and set it equal to num1 plus num2, it's quite long to do. We can just essentially use this plus equal sign or to shorten that down, just say we want to take this number or this variable and we just want to add itself to another variable. So pretty much the same as arithmetic operators, but we just simply make a little bit shorter there. And then we have something called comparison operators. And we use these in order to compare two pieces of data with one another. And as you can see on the board behind me here, we do have quite a few different ones. Whenever we use a equal equal in between the two data, we're asking whether or not these two are equal to one another. And it doesn't matter about the data type. Remember when we talked about strings and integers, we talked about creating a number that was inside a string and we could actually check whether or not it was the same as another number that might be an integer type. In this case here, it's just going to ignore the fact that these might be two different data types. Whereas in the next one, we have three equal signs after each other. We're checking whether or not these two are the same number and we're also checking if they're the same data type. And of course we have the next example here that is identical to the next one with the equal, equal, equal one. But instead we replace one of the equal signs with an exclamation mark in order to check whether or not they are not the same and not the same data type. And then we can also go ahead and check whether one number is lesser than the other, if they are lesser than and equal to, if they're greater than, if they're greater than and equal to. So there's a couple of different ones here when it comes to, you know, which one is greater than the other or the other way around. And then we have this weird one called a spaceship. And this one is a little bit difficult to understand for some people, but I will try and explain it as well as I can. So if we have two numbers, and let's say the one on the left is greater than the one on the right, this is going to return as one. If the two numbers are equal to each other, it is going to return as zero. If the one on the right is greater than the one on the left, it is going to return as negative one. So we can use this in order to check three different types of outcomes when it comes to comparing two numbers together. And again, if you don't understand why we would need to use the number one, minus one, or zero, it again has something to do with comparing different numbers together in different PHP statements. So we will get to talk more about PHP statements in the future where we might do an example with a spaceship, who knows. Um, <laughs> but for now, just know that we can use this spaceship in order to compare two numbers together in three different possible outcomes. And then we have something called logical operators. Now, logical operators simply allow for you to combine different types of comparisons together and check whether or not both of them are correct, like if they both return as true, 
or if one of them return as true, or if they both return as false, and so on and so on and so on. So in this first example, you can see that I took num1 and asked, is num1 equal to 5? And then I went ahead and said, and I also want to check whether num2 is equal to 10. Now in this case here, it will return true because both of them are going to be equal to the numbers I set them equal to. And we can also rewrite this in a different way instead of writing and. We can use two ampersand symbols. That is how I will do it in the future, just so you're aware of it. So we can use two symbols instead of writing a word, which is and. And when we use this example here, both these statements have to be true in order for this entire statement to return as true, if that makes sense. So in this next example here, where I'm using or instead of and, one of these statements has to be true, not both. So if let's say uh, num1 is equal to five and I say that num2 is equal to six, the first one is going to be true, but num2 is not equal to six, it's equal to 10. That's what we wrote previously when we created the variables. So this one will still return as true because just one of these has to be true. And just like before with the ampersand symbols, we can also write or in a different way by using the pipe symbols. And this is also what I'm going to be doing in the future when we create any sort of comparisons with these logical operators. So just know that I will be using pipe symbols. You can just write or instead if you can't find that button on your keyboard because it is a tricky one to find. And then we have another one called XOR, which is a little bit different because in this one, we're checking if one of the statements are true, but they can't both be true. So if both of these are true, this will return as false. And if one of them is true, this is going to return as true. If both of them are false, this is going to return as false. So you kind of get the idea here. And then in the last example here, we have one that's a little bit unique because this one is basically just one statement. So we say, is num1 equal to six? It is not. But because I put the exclamation mark in front of it, I'm not checking whether or not these are true or false. I'm checking the opposite. I'm checking, is this one false? Because if this statement is false, this overall statement will return as true. Now, in the next example here, we're gonna talk about something called incrementers and decrementers. Now, in some cases, when we write PHP code, we might want to increase a number just by one, and we can do that using incrementers or decrementers. Now, there is a difference here, though. If I were to write variable num1, and I were to write it with two plus symbols in front of it, then I'm going to add one to this variable and then I'm going to output the variable. So if I were to echo this out in the browser and let's say num1 right now is five, then if I were to echo it out, it is going to echo out six because it's going to add one and then echo out the variable. In another example, if I were to take this same variable and echo it out, but add the plus symbols in front of the variable, it is going to echo out five in the browser, but then afterwards it's going to add one, meaning that the number afterwards is going to be six. So the main difference between putting the plus symbols in front or behind is simply are we adding the number first before we echo or after we echo out the number. And we can do the same thing when it comes to minus, which is the decrementers. We can add minuses in front of the, the variable, which means that we're going to subtract one and then echo out four in the browser, or we can add it afterwards, which means that we echo out five, and then after we echo it out, it is going to turn into four. And then we have the last one here, which is one called a string operator. And this is one you will also be very glad to know about because in some cases in PHP, if I were to take, let's say variable A and set it equal to a string, and then I were to take variable B, set it equal to another string, and I want to combine these two strings together, then what I can do is I can create variable C, set it equal to variable A, and then use a punctuation between the two variables to say that I want to combine these two together to form something. If variable A and B had been numbers, let's say one and two, this would end up being 12. But in this case, since I use strings, these are going to form a complete sentence. And again, we can do this in different ways. You don't have to combine variables together. In some cases, you might have a variable A, and then I just want to combine it to a string. So I could just say punctuation, and then add a string behind it, and then I'm going to combine these two together, which is a great way if you want to add things together when it comes to outputting certain things inside the browser using, let's say, an echo or something. So just know that we will be using this punctuation symbol in order to add things together quite often when it comes to writing PHP code. So this is all I wanted to talk about when it comes to the different operators we have inside PHP for now. 
There is some more to talk about, but for now, this is what I wanted to discuss since this is what we're going to be using in the next upcoming episode. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.